Welcome to EPG Parshala. I am Professor B. Hariharan from the Institute of English University of Kerala. In the course on the introduction to 20th century literature, we are, will be now looking at the module on Doris Lessing's path-breaking novel, The Golden Notebook. Doris Lessing won the Nobel Prize in 2007. She was a very uh, spirited, vociferous writer. Her notable works include The Grass is Singing in 1950, The Golden Notebook in 1962, The First Child in 1988, Love Again in 1996, and the last book that she published was Alfred and Emily in 2008 after she won the Nobel Prize. Now her works display an intertwining of the personal and the political. Now this is something that really stands out in her oeuvre. Let's now look at The Golden Notebook. This is a novel that is considered to be a cult classic. The novel has a fragmentary structure and narration. This has been hailed as a postmodern text because readers and critics say that its mode of narration has captured the spirit, the zigeist of the postmodern world. Now, in this novel, Lessing tackles a whole range of issues which include gender politics, racial discrimination, communism and individual conflict. Now this, these four issues are tackled in a very unique fashion. Now we get an indication of that from the very title of the book itself. Now, we say that this is a novel, but then the title of the book has this term notebook. So, are these notes? What kind of a book is this that we are reading? So, let's try to look in some detail at that. We will look first at the themes and then the structure of this novel. Now, when we do this, there are six things to keep in mind. We have to look at the idea of the notebooks, the idea of fragmentation, gender politics and female bonding and male resistance. Now this has a lot of importance when we discuss the work of Doris Lessing. Communism and disillusionment that will certainly bring in the political dimension and of course racial discrimination. These are the six broad areas that we will be looking at. Okay, now let's look at the notebook. Now this is the broad frame of the narrative. Now this is the notebooks provide this narrative with a wholeness with artistic unity. The notebooks are a structural device that connects the very many different themes that we had tried to indicate, that I had tried to indicate at the very beginning. These four notebooks can be read as four different codes, if one might want to use that term. There certainly is a very clear color coding here. There are four colors, they are black, red, yellow and blue. These four books explore the personality of the main character in this book, Anna Wolf. She has a multifaceted personality. She is an author herself. And so this book tries to talk about these various themes by having uh, a protagonist who is also an author. Now, this is also a book, incidentally, it must be mentioned that this is also a book uh, that has been celebrated as a work championing the cause of feminists and feminism. But then Lessing 
would maintain that her work does not try to project the war of the sexes. Now, to reduce the novel to uh, in, in this manner, she feels would uh, limit the what, limit what the novel is trying to do uh, in terms of its let's say theme and politics. Now, it's quite clear that the protagonist Anna Wolf becomes in a way an extension of the authorial self because we find her discussing the travails, the pangs, the anxieties of writing, the angst of being an individual who is very socially, very much socially conscious in a world that is, that does not, that is robbed of um, sensitivity, a world which does not react to injustice and things that are unfair, that are things that are happening around, around you. So it's in this sense that Anna Wolf is located in this novel. Now let's look at uh, these different four notebooks. These no notebooks kind of talk about different things. Now let us look at that. Now the black notebook records Anna's experiences in Africa. The red notebook is or becomes Anna's political consciousness. The yellow notebook is an extension of her creative self and the blue notebook is a journal it's a record of day-to-day -day life we have now mentioned four now there is something called the golden notebook we have talked about these four let us we will look at the gold what what is it that makes the golden notebook these four notebooks become a composite they become a kind of a melange now these notebooks mirror the psyche, the fragmented psyche of the contemporary or the postmodern individual. Now, when, when we use the, the image of the mirror and then when we talk about a fragmented psyche, now think of the effect that it has. There would be further fragmentation. There will, there will not be any uh, any cohesiveness as it were now this is um, in line with the kind of style that the text seems to generate the text certainly has a non-linear narrative style and when we think of this image of the mirror and the fragmented psyche this is probably the narrative style that the novelist adopts here and it is further augmented the, the the linearity in in the style of narration is enhanced one should say by the excerpts that you have from the book from the notebooks now they are not complete uh, notebooks they are all notebooks in the sense that they are fragments and when you read it you feel that there are they are excerpts from some other source but then we don't go hunting for those sources now, these notebooks, in the way in which they are presented to you, sustain the logicality of what could otherwise become a very, very chaotic kind of a narrative. Now, that gives you some kind of an indication of the type of narrative structure that this book has. Gives you an indication of the complexity involved in the narration, the complexity that is there in the way in which uh, Anna Wolf, let us say, or the self of Anna Wolf, let us say, emerges in this book. Now let's look at the notebooks in some detail. We'll begin with the yellow notebook. The yellow notebook constitutes a diegetic level. It talks or it tells you the story of Ella. Now. Let us see what happens here. The, the book adopts a deliberate metafictional strategy. And in the yellow notebook, you have Anna who writes Ella's story. 
and Ella is writing another story. So what is the story that you read? You will be reading Anna who is writing Ella's story and you are also reading Ella who is writing another story. So this is what you are reading in the yellow notebook. Now the blue notebook has newspaper clippings and when we read these newspaper clippings what happens is we start we, we question the nature of reality itself. The golden notebook that symbolizes Anna's attempts to regroup her fragmented self. Now in other words the golden notebook represents the creative principle. Now there's something else that I would like uh, I would like to draw your attention to. Now um, the yellow notebook also very closely mirrors the events in the main narrative. Now what Lessing perhaps is trying to do um, with the metafictional strategy is to see if it is possible to understand something of the therapeutic effect of writing. The Golden Notebook tries to restore sense out of self senselessness and form out of formlessness. Now, the rejuvenation is not immediate, immediately released or realized uh, because Anna falls back but then of course she bounces back. Now the notebooks are never discarded here too. and at the end of it Anna peruses them, studies them once again, understands that these books together form an indelible part of her psyche. Now I think we should look at the whole idea of fragmentation. Now Anna's fragmented world is indicative of societal fragmentation. Now this is uh, this idea of fragmentation at the thematic level is sustained by uh, a non-linear narration which is indicative of uh, the nature of Lessing's creative world which is essentially fragmentary. So in this sense you have all the four notebooks becoming the late motif of fragmentation. Now Anna Wolf emerges at the end of it stronger as she listens to, as she heeds to the cacophony of her divided, diverse selves. Now, I think there is this remarkable way in which all these narratives, all these voices converge or come together. And <coughs> this is where, uh, this is what takes you back to this whole notion of therapy or healing. Now let's get on with the idea of fragmentation. Now Anna attains or embraces, Anna embraces the world that is fragmentary and attains awareness which is not there for uh, someone like Tommy because Tommy is very confused and he is not able to uh, reconcile the multiple selves, these plural selves. Now we have to also keep in mind that his physical blindness is also symbolic of a lack of real or true awareness. Now. Tommy is important here because he is a foil to Anna because whatever Anna is able to do Tommy uh, fails or he cannot do it. Perhaps uh, Tommy is the, the other, the, the, the kind of double uh, of Anna. It might be possible to make an argument like that. We have to now, we will be now looking at the whole theme, the whole idea of gender politics. This is a novel that is hailed as a feminist text and we know that 
and uh, Lessing very famously refuted this argument saying that this is a novel that describes female emotions. Now, there are these two women here, Anna and Molly, who are empowered in the course of this narrative. Now, Anna, in the course of this narrative, what she is able to do is she is able to write herself. Now, it's in this sense that Anna and Molly in a way complete each other and then become empowered women in the narrative. So, it's in this fashion that we can say that Anna and of course Molly refuse to, to efface their uh, identity or their individuality for others, particularly men who have crossed their lives. Anna and Molly, as I said earlier, are presented here as free women. They are free. Now, what Lessing is trying to do here is to share with the reader, show how the idea of the free of free women is a normative category in itself. Now, in the process, what the novel is trying to do is to critique the double standards that a patriarchal system or patriarchal society had established as the norm. We must also keep in mind that not, Lessing is very careful not to portray all gender relations in a negative manner. Now, this is something that we have to say uh, as some kind of a strength in this novel. Coming to another dimension uh, that emerges uh, in the course of reading this book uh, are two concerns that has to do with female bonding and of course male resistance. Now female bonding is something that uh, is developed in terms of the Anna Molly relationship and male resistance in terms of patriarchal structures and patriarchal society. Now what the book does is to foreground primarily the theme of sisterhood. Now uh, this is this could possibly be one reason why uh, Lessing has reservations about calling this novel a feminist text. Now Anna's relationship with Molly is truly indicative of the faith, the trust and concern that they have for each other. The theme in that sense of female bonding is so very central here for Anna to become a balanced individual and this is one way in which she is able to recognize what self means and through that become Anna. Now if we understand the, the, the emergence of Anna, the, em, the, the, the emergence of Anna, Anna from all those fragments and then reach or under, uh, reach this point where we recognize the importance of female bonding here which is so crucial, we will have to say that Molly and Anna are misfits, they are aberrations in a patriarchal system that they will find it very difficult uh, uh, they will find it very difficult to be accepted for what they are now this is now what we have said so far has to do with female bonding now let's look at the the male part of it the other side of it we have characters like michael or or richard who symbolize their dislike, their resentment towards what, or towards the way in which these two women, let's say, have come together, towards this idea of female bonding. Now, people like Michael and Richard, for instance, look at 
this female space that is created, carved out, they, they look at it with a whole lot of antagonism. They try to manipulate women so, so that they will be able to destroy that friendship. Now, there is then a very clear uh, gender war, as it were, uh, trying to, which becomes perhaps ultimately uh, an attempt to exercise control uh, and power. This, is, this book, in that sense, comments on uh, what female space creates. Female space creates something for women. But then what does it create for men? Lessing would say that it is a species. Now, Lessing seems to be arguing that men cannot comprehend the space that women create. Now, this seems to be what Lessing is saying. Now, uh, this is a position that can be debated, it can be contested, but then uh, let, let us try to uh, take it, leave it at that point, and this can be taken up later on. Now, uh, there is another area that is of very great concern here that has to do with uh, disillusionment with ideology, particularly communist ideology. Now, Lessing was a Marxist, she was a communist and like perhaps many intellectuals and writers, she also was disillusioned with communism. Now, this is closely mirrored in the character of Anna, in what Anna has to say, in the discussions that she has with others in the novel. All, it's, all this is presented here, it's all mirrored in Anna who expresses her misgivings, her distrust about the, the, the ideology of the left. Now, both Anna and Molly in this narrative provide a very insightful critique of the Communist Party. Now, this is very important. They, uh, it's not a critique or a criticism of communism, but it's a critique of the Communist Party. Now, uh, you have here, in a way, a kind of self-criticism as Anna critiques her own political allegiance. So, the criticism comes from within. Now, this uh, is something that uh, one reads and uh, it perhaps also helps you to, to take a very, very balanced view of the discussions that are there in the book about ideology. Now, what Anna does is she analyzes her apathy for party politics, number one. The second thing is that she reasons that, this is how she does this, she reasons that the party is losing its grip on popular imagination. Now, uh, this is um, something that has concerned a whole lot of, um, let's say, intellectuals or even writers. Uh, and Anna here is no exception. Anna also realizes that her comrades, her fellow comrades, are trapped in what she refers to as the constructedness of their political fantasies. In other words, what she is saying is that her fellow comrades have lost touch with grassroots workers and the ground reality that exists in society. So, in a way, what we have is a very trenchant criticism of uh, the phase through which communist, the Communist Party and uh, the comrades are going through. She realizes that her party has now become stagnant, that there is no growth, that it's decaying, there is boredom. It is this boredom 
because of that stagnancy that leads her to denounce her party and the political ideology which that party was trying to miserably uphold what the novel also does is to contrast anna with jack we see here anna reacting against the ossified principle that the party stands for it's a it's a reaction that uh, when we read it from anna's side is very well articulated very well argued now let's look at one more dimension in this novel what what we we, we see that uh, the kind of concerns that uh, we have discussed so far are all very very complex and to add to that is this very very sensitive issue of uh, questions of race racial discrimination now anna talks about her experiences in africa and that's what you have in the black notebook the black notebook in that sense becomes a record of the racial discrimination that she witnessed in africa it may not be a major theme in the novel but racial tension looms large in the background and perhaps uh, it might be interesting to read this background and uh, see why she was disillusioned with the communist party now anna is not very comfortable with her novel featuring the black experience we must remember that anna is a writer is a no is a is a novelist so what we have is the golden notebook in which anna writes a novel about her african experience and she is not very comfortable with what she has written there fine now anna also at that point this is a remarkable moment of revelation because she realized that she is guilty of objectifying people uh, of color the africans in her work and she is disturbed by racial discrimination and she becomes a helpless spectator now uh it's not anna's word throughout you have here lessing contrasting uh, all the fulminations of anna with uh, a pragmatic approach that willy propounds now racial discrimination is also political and in that sense doris lessing questions the faith or the sincerity of political ideologies which try to adapt or adopt a practical stance now let's try to put some of these things together in the form of a conclusion i think we need to underline the fact that this is a novel that will be very difficult to summarize uh, what we have tried to do here is to indicate some of the features some of the things that can be highlighted in the novel uh, i would before we conclude i would like to say that uh, the shortcut to understand what this book is all about is to read the novel now let's try to sum up some of the arguments here now the conflicts that uh, that are there uh, in the world in which we live are crystallized here they all come together in this novel this is a novel that has universal appeal and perhaps this is why the novel is popular even today anna and her world holds up a mirror to not reality to postmodern reality i wish you a very good reading experience thank you